question that you find yourself asking yourself more often than, is there a particular question that, that you find yourself asking? Yes, why? Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things, you know, as you're, as you're doing interviews, particularly in high change environments, um, I'll give you an example, I'm in, the, I'm in the digital publishing space and I was interviewing folks in terms of, you know, we have lots of uh, consumer brands, All Recipes, Better Homes and Gardens, Martha Stewart, Parent, Shape, Fitness, all sorts of brands. Um, and uh, I asked one of our editors, I said, you know, tell me what you do. And she said, well, you know, this month my goal is to create 50 pieces of content for the site. I said, well, why do you do that? What do you mean? We need 50 pieces of content on the site. And so kind of prying as to, well, let me understand what, really what you're attempting to do and as opposed to I just need to create 50 pieces of content to put on the site and having the, uh, you know, showing the interest in what's, uh, in understanding, understanding the underlying levers of the business and understanding what people are doing I think is, is, uh, is critical. So I ask, I ask why a lot. Jean, do you have a, a question that you find yourself asking yourself? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. I, I guess I don't think about it like that, like one question that I always go to. But I, I do think why is a good one. You, know, you do need to understand, is it just a, a wild hair you've got that you want to do something, or is there really a reason behind it? And what is what... Yeah, you know, what needle is it going to move? Is it going to make a difference in the business? Is it worth investing? I don't have a very big team. You know, we're small, and so every uh, idea I have or bring to the table is a huge burden on them, right? Um, so I have to be be careful that it's definitely something that's going to move the business forward or, or differentiate us in some way. Steve, yeah, yeah, I um, I happen to to work in an industry where uh, there's a lot of um, kind of um, legacy and uh, and and you know, not a lot of innovation uh, in, in parts of it, and, and people try to protect what they have. Um, and the lesson that <clears throat> you, it's always easier to take lessons when you watch somebody else as opposed to your own mistakes. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and so one of the things that was really fascinating to watch was, um, you know, why would somebody put their interests ahead of, of, of somebody else's interests? Um, and, and what I mean by this is that, that um, if you try to protect what you have, uh, you're almost always going to fail. And, um, and so one of the things that we pushed really hard uh, at Concur was this idea that, that, look, imagine the way the world ought to work. Whatever portion of the world that you operate in, imagine the way it ought to work. Now you have to take yourself out of that equation. So if there's any benefit for you, by definition, you're going to arrive at the wrong answer. And so, so take yourself and any benefit for you out of the equation, define the way it ought to work in your segment of the world, and then go try to make that a reality. If you can do that, then, then there's a better chance of, of actually succeeding. There's a better chance for many people, not just your company, but many people to actually be a part of that success. And so <clears throat> it's a variation of the why or the why not. Um, but it, it's that level of, of, of uh, openness that I, I think it can benefit, at least for me, it's benefited both at the company level and also at the personal level.